Hello everyone, I am Narendra. In this channel, we discuss about the science and technology and how they impact on society. Science mainly encompasses the systematic study of the structure and behavior of the physical and natural world through observation and experiment. Technology is the application of scientific knowledge for practical purposes. So in this video, I am going to start an introduction to nanoscience and nanotechnology. Let's start our discussion. Now we discuss about nanoscience and nanotechnology. Nanoscience and nanotechnology deals with the extremely small things and can be used across the, all the other science fields such as chemistry, biology, physics, material science and engineering. In this video, I will give you some introductory to nanoscience and nanotechnology. Before going to that, first of all, we should know what is the evolution of technology. This is the evolution of technology. In this, I am showing the first example is the telephone. How these telephones have transformed to smartphones. Since 1800, the telephone has gone through hundreds of changes, no matter what form the phone takes. However, it still completely revolutionized how society communicates and interacts with each other and continues to impact culture to this day. Due to the massive history of the phone, here I will present only few major highlights. The first concept of phone was given by Alexander Graham Bell in 1875. He designed a device that could transmit speech electronically. The first phone with the ability to dial a number was invented in 1927. In the 1973, the very first cordless phones were introduced. The first smartphone was developed by IBM in 1992. Afterwards, the phone technology advanced exponentially and the current mobile phones become more compact, offered high resolution screens and had more features than ever before. The next example is the evolution of computers. In 1822, the first mechanical computer was created by Charles Babbage and the first programmable computer was created in 1938 that was known as the first functional modern computer. The early computers were mechanical and did not run on electricity. Some experimental computers were a combination of electricity and mechanical operation but they weren't successful at that time. Thereafter, the first digital computer in 1946 was introduced and the first computer with RAM in 1955 was invented. Until the end of 1950s, computers were all very big with vacuum tubes and required an entire room just to hold them. Then in the 1960s, computers are started to be built with transistors which are smaller, more efficient and much less expensive than vacuum tubes. <coughs> the, the next big invention was the microprocessor. This allowed entire circuits to be built into a single component that is an integrated circuit chip. This led to the creation of current computers and laptops. So this technology has been driven by the demand of higher transistor and integration density of microprocessors and storage components. So here I am showing the figure. The famous engineer come businessman Gordon Murray, one of the founders of computer processor gate Intel, he postulated exponential growth of integrated circuits that will be doubled every two years and his forecast has correct so far. Now the current integrated circuit built with millions of transistors. You can see in the image that the millions of transistors are integrated to the circuit board and this type of integrated circuits have been used in the current computers. For any of these developments in technologies, the scientific knowledge in nanoscience and nanotechnology played a crucial role. Next, we need to understand the what is nano. Well, 
without providing a definite answer to this question nano is a popular area of science and technology today it has attracted the attention of researchers from all walks of life from physics to chemistry to biology and engineering nano has even entered popular culture it is used as a buzzword in the contemporary books movies and television commercials for example if you take a recent blockbuster of hollywood movie avengers endgame the iron man he wears the suit so he mentioned that that was built with nanotechnology in one more example in 2018 tata motors introduced nano cars also known as the world's cheapest car that created a significant impact in the indian automobile market the next example is the most of the people familiar about the nano sim even if people are not educated the nano word is known to them through mobile phones in this way most of you had known about the word nano in today's scientific domain the word nano describes physical length scale nano is prefix like milli or centi that are on the order of 1 billionth of a meter long that is inverse of a billion or 10 to the power of minus 9 to understand the nano scale what makes it unique from other metric scales here i am showing a basic concept on length scale with several example let us see first meter scale if you consider a palm tree the height of a palm tree is nearly about 2 to 18 meter so if you reduce the size to centimeter scale the average size of a football is about 20 cm it is relatively smaller than the height of a palm tree then further reduce the size to millimeter range if you measure the size of an ant that comes under this scale range it is about 0.8 to 50 mm this is again smaller than the football and if further reduce the size to milli micrometer range so the size of a human hair falls into this scale range that is about 22180 micrometer and one more example is that if you consider a size of a blood cell in the human body it is about 5 micrometer further reduce the size to nanometer scale range at this scale the objects become very small and that cannot seen by our naked eye for example the typical size of a corona virus is about 100 nanometer range one more example is that a carbon nanotube here the diameter of the tube is about 5 nanometer range so this is type this type of nanometers have been used to build the nanotechnology if you see the objects beyond the nanometer scale that enter into the atomic scale range for example fullerene has the size about 0.7 nanometer here you can see the how atoms are bonded together this is the complete concept of the length scale from meters to nanometer or beyond that range it is also clear that our naked eye can have the resolution to see the objects is nearly about 100 micrometer range we need to see the objects after the scale range with using the optical microscope afterwards we can only see the objects by high resolution and expensive techniques like electron microscopy and scanning probe microscopy so these techniques we'll discuss later in the other topic now why discuss about the history of nanoscience and nanotechnology it has a long history from the ancient world nanoscience and nanotechnology have been used by humans in 4th century ad by the roman which demonstrated one of the most interesting examples of nanotechnology in the ancient world the lycurgus cup which represents one of the most outstanding achievements in the ancient glass industry 
the cup has two different colors. The glass appears green in direct light and it appears red purple color when light shines through the glass. These are mainly due to the presence of silver gold alloy nanoparticles which have dimensions within the range 50 to 100 nanometer. And after a long time, in 1959, a famous American physicist Richard Feynman, he introduced the concept of nanotechnology when he gave a talk titled as There's a Plenty of Room at the Bottom in which he explained when things could be miniaturized so that huge amounts of information could be made to fit into tiny spaces and machinery could be made smaller and more compact. Thereafter, in 1974, Tokyo Science University professor Norio Taniguchi, he coined the term nanotechnology to describe precision machining of materials to within atomic scale dimensional tolerances. So the first important milestone in nanotechnology occurred in 1985 with the invention of buckyball. The next important step was the invention of carbon nanotube in 1991. Since then nanotechnology has made it possible to manufacture lighter, stronger and programmable materials that require less energy to produce than conventional materials. In the same year, there is the invention of scanning tunneling microscope in which the tunneling of electrons can be possible between the metal tip and conducting samples. After 2000, a new class of carbon nanomaterials called carbon quantum dots with size below 10 nanometer was discovered accidentally during the purification of single wall carbon nanotubes. Two professors from University of Manchester, they discovered graphene in 2004. After the discovery of graphene, carbon based materials become the backbone of almost every field of science and engineering. Afterwards, the nanotechnology has advanced rapidly with invention of techniques to build nanoscale structures and devices. In recent times, nanotechnology has become increasingly important. It has many uses from developing numerous electrical equipment to medical applications. Nanotechnology has wide variety of applications ranging from energy to agriculture, biomedical, environment, cosmetics and defense. Numerous prospective benefits for health and the environment are offered by nanotechnology, with engineered nanomaterials being developed for renewable energy capture and battery storage, water purification, and environmental sensors. Some of these applications I will discuss in another video. So that was the nice introduction on nanoscience and nanotechnology. Hope you enjoyed. See you next time with other discussion.